Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I am Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran, and today we are taking a look at some pretty incredible footage from Ukraine. This is live counter battery fire. We've talked about it for a while on other videos, but now we finally get to see it live as we see an artillery duel take place right before our eyes. Now, do me one favor, guys. If you like this content, man, hit that subscribe button. I really want to get to 100k subscribers. Put that silver plaque on my wall of uh, wall of uh, stuff there. And it doesn't cost you anything, and it doesn't mean you'll see every one of my videos. Okay, let's get into it. This is Russian troops firing artillery receiving direct Ukrainian counter battery fire. I always appreciate when these have accurate titles. So what we're looking at here is a Russian artillery position, right? You can see we've got obviously the artillery piece itself. It looks pretty hastily set up because classically what you're going to want to do if you have any kind of time is dig this artillery piece in. You're going to want to have it surrounded by sandbags or, or just something that's going to make it harder to damage that artillery piece with counter battery fire. And of course, its crew. You can see here the crew are basically just in the open. Um, it's tough to see. There may also be like a fire direction computer or some sort of digitized um, system for feeding target data to this artillery piece but it seems pretty hastily set up it's also sort of bizarre that there's only one i'm used to seeing a a artillery battery i think of as being several guns firing together okay so here it's zoomed out a little bit you can see this looks like a uh sort of hasty russian compound here was what looks like a russian military vehicle looks like they set it up in the walled compound of a ukrainian a wealthy uh citizen's a state, right? There's actually a garden with a fountain. This maybe is, could even be a helipad, uh, a main pretty opulent estate, and a robust forest garden in the back with a lot of walking trails. Really clearly someone's um, pride and joy here as far as the states go. And you can see there's already been some fighting. There's some scorched earth down here and a lot of vehicles that positioned and repositioned here. But it appears that they're gone and that all that remains is just one artillery piece, which is sort of bizarre. But it also tells us that this is a location that's known to Ukrainian forces. And obviously, someone is filming this from a drone above the site. I would hypothesize that the first shot was of the artillery battery firing. Uh, right here, the artillery crew has not noticed the drone spying on their position. And I suspect right here is where these guys have noticed. Oh, sn oh crud. There's a drone overhead. It's been watching us, right? And now we need to get inside this building. There's probably, ho you hope, a room or two inside with sandbags that are secured that can withstand a little bit of indirect fire. Now you can see we cut to a little later and the indirect fire, counter battery fire starts. This is impressive because you can see this is a almost perfectly spot on shot. And some of it I think is a function of very, very precise coordinates fed by the drone, right? It's sort of unprecedented in warfare to have the ability to not just see a target in indirect uh, an indirect fire target but to have precision data down to the meter about where it is because again you have the drone and if you needed to get an exact location of the target you could literally position the drone directly overhead record your gps coordinates and send those rounds but they probably don't even have to do that i suspect if they know the drone's location and they know say the length of the house they can just multiply that by two you can get exactly where the distance and direction you need to adjust your fire to put rounds directly on target this also some people are saying that this is a reflection of the fact that more and more top of the line nato equipment is getting into ukrainian forces hands this is something that's the product of not just a uh skilled drone operator but is also the product of a excellent fire direction system right a fire direction system computer controlled is going to uh, instantly feed target data to the batteries, allowing them to lock on right away. It could also be that they may have received some uh, extremely high-end technology, stuff that I'm not even certain that the U.S. is, is necessarily providing um, yet, but this would be radar, counter-battery radar. Its existence is, is 
completely public as as is everything that I talk about. But counter battery radar is an extremely sensitive radar system that will detect incoming rounds, rounds fired at your base, like the round we saw discharged from the artillery piece here just a few moments ago. The radar will, of course, get a sense of the round and its trajectory, and knowing that the rounds follow a predictable arc, if you can get two points in that arc, you can calculate, you can reverse engineer the exact location of where that round originated. Once you have that, right, you can easily send and automatically, in a lot of cases, send fire right back to the target. In Afghanistan, this was incredibly common. The Taliban would routinely use most often mortar rounds that they would lob onto U.S. bases. And it was so common in the 20 plus year war that the U.S. developed incredibly effective counter battery radars that would, with minimal human intervention, detect the incoming round, offer a trajectory to return fire and u.s commanders would just have to give the thumbs up and the batteries would start firing this was good because it meant that the taliban would in most cases they evolved their tactics they would either um not have anyone at the mortars they would rig up ways to delay the mortar round from discharging so that it would fire when they were long gone or they would simply launch one round in about the right direction and then they would boogie out of there so that by the time the round even impacted on base the taliban were long gone they could for example put the mortar tube in the back of a pickup truck so it would literally just they would line everything up the pickup truck would be idling they'd throw around and drive off the other technique that they used to evade counter battery fire was actually to freeze the top half of the mortar round in a block of ice. They would, and then they would set it at the entrance of the tube. And as the ice melted, eventually the round would slide down the tube, right? Catch and fire away. But the, the Taliban forces that set it up would be long gone. All of these are decent workarounds, but you notice that they don't really allow you to fire more than one round. You can't really achieve any sort of eff effective fire. You can't put dozens or hundreds of rounds into the battlefield if you are constantly being harassed by counter battery fire, by accurate, effective counter battery fire. And that's what we're seeing here. These troopers seem to know they were able to fire a round or two and quickly realized that they were going to be hit with counter battery fire. So they had to stop firing and take cover. Oh, we're going to turn this music down because I think it's copyrighted. You can see here, it looks like some rounds have already started cooking off. That's what these look like. These look like maybe rounds from an ammunition depot, but these these could be um, like uh, white phosphorus rounds or some other sort of thermal round that's cooking off, right? You can see what look here like maybe also rounds, or maybe just debris. But either way, you're seeing a lot of their, um, lot of their rounds being destroyed before they've ever been fired. Yeah, I suspect those are probably some sort of, uh, art like thermo round, like some sort of like their version of um, white phosphorus. Another very accurate round. Yeah, you can see here is another uh, military truck. And this actually looks like another artillery piece. You can see a main gun here and two stabilizers off to the side. So I suspect that that's another artillery piece that probably hasn't been brought into the fight yet or has already been knocked out of the fight. You can see they're also walking these rounds closer to the house. And it ends there, which is good because, you know, as you know from this channel, I don't really like to see anything graphic. But I hope you guys got to get a better understanding of when we talk about first things like counter battery fire and uh, our, our dueling artillery, how exactly that is going to look when you're on the receiving end of counter battery fire. But even more important, I hope you guys understand just how effective the technology we're providing to the Ukrainians is. And it's a testament to their motive, not only their motivation, but their armed forces competence that they can adapt and really see these tech, these high-end technologies that are uh, levels above what a typical Eastern European military is going to have access to, at least in mass. And, you know, you, you can, 
which you need to be an effective military fighting force is some combination of sufficient technology and sufficient organization and sufficient motivation. Right? The Ukrainian military, luckily, they have a considerable motivation. They've shown that. Their command structure has changed tremendously since 2014. It's a lot more effective than it used to be. And now with the influx of this high technology weapon systems, they can be extremely effective. It's funny, the Afghan uh, military and police forces were famously had this entirely backwards. They had first rate equipment from the United States, but they had such poor organization that they were unable to maintain it. And they had extremely low morale and motivation. They weren't motivated to take on the Taliban as a, as a country, right? As an armed force. Um, instead, they were more concerned with lining their own pockets by selling goods, uh, selling uh, military equipment to contractors, to the Taliban, to each other. Um, and when you have that level of corruption, that institutional lack of motivation, it can be an absolute, it, it, it cannot fix, no technology can fix it. And we saw that, right? The Afghans had such poor motivation, such terrible logistical organizations that they could not field things like modern fighter jets. They actually, by the end of the war, had to be issued um, propeller driven aircraft because those were simpler to maintain easier engines to keep rolling and so that's what they would use they would use prop planes uh because that's all that they're phenomenally corrupt and phenomenally um disorganized uh, military could operate so to me you see videos like this and you go oh it's the technology well it's only i'd say one third of it is technology the other two thirds, the more important two thirds, are the fighting spirit and the military organization. All right, guys, if you guys want some uh, content that's maybe a little too spicy for me to put on YouTube, check out the patron Patreon. Link is in the description. Thanks to our Lieutenant Tier patrons. I'll see you guys in the next one.